As promised, today we'll be examining the most commonly used programming languages and frameworks in South Africa. Additionally, we'll address everyone's favorite question, how much do developers add? Because for whatever reason, you guys have been led to believe that um, developers make a lot of money, which is true and not true at the same time. And just a disclaimer, everything in this video is not my personal opinion. It is sourced from online South African publications. Therefore, please do not take offense as some of you guys did on the previous video about debunking the myths of software development. So please, tell us in a cage. If you want to catch a ax and bump in, I'm just joking, but yeah, let's behave. Let's go. So let's begin by examining the top five most used programming languages overall. When I say overall, I mean usage in terms of backend, front end, and full stack development in South Africa. As you can observe from the graph, JavaScript takes the lead as the number one language. Although its usage has declined, it remains strong from 2022 to 2023. Moving on to my personal favorite and the language I specialize in, we have C Sharp. It has also experienced a slight dip but continues to hold its position as number two, which means Puma will not be unemployed anytime soon. But anyways, that's a story for another day. Coming in at number three, we have TypeScript, which shows promise as the only language that has grown from 2022 to 2023 amongst the top five. Coming in at number four is Python the most beloved language amongst new developers. Uh, according to OfferZ, it has started to lose popularity, but the numbers will reveal more in 2024. Finally, we have the OG language, Java. It's still holding its crown here in Mzanz and securing the fifth spot. It is important to note that if you don't see the programming language you are working with or learning in this top five, it doesn't mean that it's bad. Unless you are learning C, <coughs> then you might be in trouble. But other than that, there are other programming languages that are being used. Um, some noteworthy mentions are like Kotlin, Go, Rust, and other programming languages. So all I can say is if you want the full detailed report about the languages, you can go check out uh, the website called Offers and it has all the information that you may want to know about when it comes to backend, front end, full stack languages, salaries and all those things. One thing I have realized about upcoming developers is that they don't know or understand the difference between languages and frameworks. Maybe one day I will create a video explaining that. Let's take a look at front-end frameworks. Just so you know, this is a summary of the report done by Offerzen. It may not represent the entire software development landscape in South Africa, but it provides some direction on what is popular out there. Looking at this graph, we can see that most of these frameworks involve JavaScript. This highlights how critical it is for upcoming developers to learn JavaScript if they want to maximize their earning potential and opportunities in the front-end development space. Additionally, it's worth mentioning that some of the frameworks may overlap between full-stack and back-end development. This means that learning certain frameworks can air can benefit developers in multiple areas of software development, allowing them to work on both front-end and back-end projects. Other frameworks mentioned here are for mobile development, such as React Native. As I know, there will be guys that are confused, like why is React appearing twice here and all that stuff. So I recommend checking out the offers and um, report for a full detailed explanation. The link will be provided in, this, in the description below. Moving on to backend frameworks, we can observe that ASP.NET and Spring are still dominating as the most widely used frameworks. Let me quickly explain. ASP.NET belongs to the Microsoft family while Spring is associated with Java. It's important to note that Java and JavaScript are two different programming languages, which is why you would also find Node.js on the list. Node.js is specifically for JavaScript and not Java. So this graph is relatively straightforward and it's quite clear which frameworks are popular in the backend um, development space. So there isn't much for me to say. On the programming languages slide, I mentioned that Python is starting to lose popularity. As you can see from the graph here, the Django framework, which is based on Python, has experienced a decline of 3.7%. This further indicates that Python's popularity is decreasing to some extent. However, there's no need to be alarmed. Python is still a fantastic language and remains one of the most widely used languages in South Africa. Finally, let's discuss full stack frameworks. 
these guys think they're the cream de la cream of development Gandhi Dololo <laughs> just kidding just kidding I'm playing don't eat me alive please um, for those who are confused full stack refers to the practice of working on both front end and back end development in the full stack category, SP.NET is leading the pack, closely followed by Node.js, React, and Angular. It is quite evident that if you want to pursue full stack development and maximize your earning potential, you should consider using one of these four frameworks. However, I want to burst your bubble by saying that being a full stack developer doesn't automatically mean you'll earn the highest salary. Many people have been led to believe so, but don't worry, we'll clarify that on the salary slide before the full stack guys eat me alive. I have decided to include the most popular and widely used cloud platforms as well because many developers out there mistakenly believe that using a specific cloud platform automatically means it's the most popular or the best choice. When it comes to cloud platforms, AWS holds the top position followed by Azure and then Google. If you are interested in pursuing a cloud certification or entering the cloud platform, I highly recommend considering AWS and Azure as the two best options to explore. However, I, I'd, I would advise against choosing Google unless you are already working with or for a company that actively utilizes Google's cloud services. I saved the best for last. Before we proceed, I want to clarify that the figures you see here are averages compiled from various sources. The salary data is presented in a format that demonstrates the range of salaries based on years of experience, showcasing both the lowest average salary and the highest average salary for individuals with significant experience. A lot of guys tend to lie about their salaries or argue with me when it comes to the salary thing, so I'm not gonna even say anything, I'm just gonna leave the screenshots here, cause these guys will tell you they're earning 3 million per annum and they're working for international companies, whereby you can see here that people who are working for multinational companies, how much they're able to earn on average, and I'm talking about senior Level, not intermediates or juniors so you can look at the graph you can look at the other screenshot for the highest salaries that are possible i'm just gonna leave it there i'm just passing the information through and it ends there now moving on to the next graph we can observe the average earnings for each type of development job. From this data, we can see that backend developers tend to earn more on average compared to others, regardless of their level of experience. They are followed by full stack developers and then front end developers. Although the difference in earning between these three categories is not substantial, it clearly indicates where the majority of the higher salaries lie. Just so you guys know, this information is sourced from offers them so please don't eat me alive especially the full stack guys because hey they are very sensitive because they feel like they are the most important people out there but fortunately we are not once again i'm just joking <laughs> So basically, most of the information I've given to you guys, I've sourced from this report that you can see on the screen right here. So please take your time and go and read this report. And a big shout out to offers and for providing us with so much information each and every year when it comes to the state of development in South Africa. If you have any issues with the video or you think I am wrong somewhere, somehow, uh, Chief, you are looking at the wrong person. Go talk to Offerzen, go talk to my broadband, go talk to Glassdoor, go talk to Payscale, because that's where the information is sourced from and a lot of different other sources. But to everyone that watched the video and got uh, this far, I appreciate every single one of you guys. Please make sure you drop a like on this video, because that's, what that's what's important. Comment and yay! Because I knew. I'm just joking. I'll see you guys on the next one. Cheers. Bye. There was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the